Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Online Footprint Project. I'm your host, Ross McFarlane. Thank you so much for investing your time with us here today. If you're new to the Online Footprint Project or OFP, we interview successful business owners and share their stories about how they got started to where they are today. We also make sure that they share actionable value so you can start applying it to your business today. Now, I'm big on feedback, so I'd love to hear from you as to what you thought of the show, what you liked, what you didn't like. Please leave me an email, uh, ross at rossmcfarlane.com, or leave some comments on our YouTube channel. Because if you want to watch the guests live and ask them live questions, then please join the Facebook group. Or if you're just happy to watch the videos, then YouTube is the best place to go. Let's go! Welcome to another episode of the Online Footprint Project. I'm your host, Ross McFarlane. Thank you so much for investing your time with us here today. So, a uh, huge guest today, very uh, humbled that he's coming on the show. Now, first of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Paula Stevens for organizing this today. Uh, she's helped facilitate this. Um, and then the guys at All Sourced Up, which are actually filming today. Now, we're currently live on Facebook. Um, and that is just a sneak preview that is on my iPhone. That is not the quality that the guys also sub offer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just a thank you to them. So uh, yeah, uh, last but not least, uh, our guest today, um, he's actually the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, uh, Martin Hasey. So, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks Ross, and welcome to Adelaide Town Hall. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, I was just mentioning before about uh, all the doors that are, uh, you know, one could be a panic room, who knows? <laughs> there are many doors in the Lord Mayor's <laughs> office, I can assure you. I mean, everyone is surprised. There's this multitude of doors in this room, but it's a, uh, Gives me the occasional escape, but which I'm not yep. going to do today because I'm very much looking forward <laughs> to our discussion. I love it. Well, I mean, speaking of escapes, do you play guitar? I do. Excellent. I'm a musician. I uh, play acoustic guitar, I play electric guitar, and I play bass guitar, and I play a bit of piano. Wow, well, so okay. I, I keep a couple of guitars in the Lord Mayor's office, and I, uh, every now and then after work, I uh, look forward to having a play. That'd be fantastic. I guess at the end of the day, a bit of a wind down, people can just hear it in the hallways. Oh, it's a very long day, so um, I would work anywhere up to 16 hours a day. Yeah, well. Okay. So 20 minutes playing the guitar before I go home, I must say, is a wonderful way to unwind. Yeah, okay, well, I'll have to take that to in mind, because uh, I used to play years ago, and then uh, kind of just stopped happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adelaide is a UNESCO city of music, and there's only a handful of those around the world. So live music, in all of its forms, is something that we love to celebrate in Adelaide. So my very small contribution to that yep. is playing a guitar in my office every now and then. I love it. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, Martin, when it comes to business, because I mean, this is a business podcast, I'd love to hear about your store in business, because I mean, with, you know, had originally having your own retail store at only 27, and then uh, was it 220 staff you got up to at one point? It was. Yeah, uh, wow. This is back in 1993 when I first launched my retail store in the city of Adelaide in Regent Arcade, which is a small arcade just off Rundle Mall. Yep. And Rundle Mall is the main shopping strip in the city of Adelaide. It's a very busy one. In fact, it's the second busiest downtown mall in Australia. Yeah, nice. We have about 24 million people a year going through that place, so it's very important socially, culturally, and economically. But I launched a very small business there called YouthWorks, which was a youth clothing store in 1993 and I was very fortunate because over the years I've built that into an 18 store retail chain uh, across Adelaide and oh, wow. across Melbourne which is a city which is about an hour's flight away and uh, along that way I at one point in time was employing about 225 people and we were manufacturing, we were importing, we were distributing, we were clearly retailing yep. and uh, we were innovating along the way. We did a lot of things first and it really gave that business a point of difference on the national landscape and it was very successful. Yeah, well, fantastic. Well, how did you make the transition from uh, retail to managing a city? It's an interesting one <laughs> because after many years in business and I studied an MBA along that journey too and I had been on numerous boards. So the Adelaide Conv Convention Bureau is a peak body which welcomes business tourism and events yeah. into Adelaide. I'd been on that board. I'd been on the board of numerous community organisations in Adelaide and South Australia also. And I think that diversified experience of leading, firstly, a large team of people, uh, being in a very competitive marketplace. Retail is extremely competitive, as anybody yeah. would know who's in it. Absolutely. And you've got to innovate, you've got to create point of sustainable difference, you've got to protect your margins, and you've got to be a good communicator and you've got to be a very good marketer. So maybe therein are some of the segues between business management and city management. Yeah, okay. But in so many ways, Ross, it is similar but different. 
Um, you, can't, you can take your commercial experience, which I think is critical. I think it's very, very important that more people in elected life, in public life, do bring a sense of commercial experience to the table. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important because ultimately a large city is a community. Of course it is. First and foremost, cities are about people. That's number one. But secondly, cities are also, they are a large commercial enterprise. There are many businesses here. The city of Adelaide has a uh, gross economic annual output of something in the order of $18 billion a year. Yeah, well. Now that's about 18% of the state economy, and the state economy clearly then is about $100 billion a year. So a lot of the key knowledge intensive industries are here, a lot of the employment is here, a lot of the innovation is here. Yeah. So bringing that commercial experience to the table is very, very important. But a city is all about leadership, communication, governance, uh, finance, Yep. Clearly, we've got to run the city's finance as well. Of course. It's about investment. Uh, it's about tourism. It's about technology. It's about innovation. But ultimately, it's about people. So I've had, and I've been fortunate over those many years, I've had quite diverse experience. Uh, culturally, commercially, I'm fairly widely travelled. I've manufactured in Australia, Indonesia, India, and China, yep. and I used to travel regularly to most of those countries for manufacturing when I had my own company. And all of that experience undoubtedly has helped me do what I do now better. Yeah, okay. Um, and, but you're still learning, uh, you have to be. When you're a Lord Mayor in public life, you've got to be learning all the time, and I certainly am. So it's been a uh, wonderful experience. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I mean, with innovation, uh, with uh, Adelaide especially being really on the, the fast track to being one of the nation's most innovative hubs for many industries, like for instance with uh, the iron battery supplied by Tesla, you know, the world's largest. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, check that out. <laughs> um, and yeah, basically, tell us a bit about uh, Australia's first 10 gigabit uh, project, because that sounds very interesting. Well, innovation and technology and sustainability are all very closely linked together. And uh, Elon Musk invested into South Australia, and of course has currently the world's largest lithium ion battery about an hour north of Adelaide and that's a great statement of innovation and South Australia and Adelaide has one of the highest uptakes of renewable energy in the world and this is what a lot of states and a lot of cities are looking for is sustainability so we are great champions of renewable energy we are great champions of sustainability yep but just as importantly we're great champions of technology and innovation and City Council last year signed a contract with a publicly listed company in Australia called TPG Telecom to roll out a 10 gigabit data network right across the city. Now, this is an extraordinary project. It's a first for Australia, but in many ways it actually could be a first for the world. We want to differentiate our city on the world stage of through course. innovation. Yep. And the way we're doing it is through digital infrastructure, which is this ultra-fast data network. So it's 10 gigabits per second, up and down, and it's cloud-based transmission. We're capturing the data by a, cable, a network of hundreds of kilometres of fibre optic cable under our city streets, but we're transmitting that data via data warehouses in the cloud. So it's a great, bold step of innovation in itself. But the idea behind it is to attract companies, to attract investment, to grow employment, and to really get behind those industries like education, yep. medical, health sciences, technology, fintech, uh, even uh, industries like uh, tourism will benefit from this. We've got a very strong entrepreneurial ecosystem in Adelaide and we're quite well known for that. There are many, many parts of this ecosystem. But what we think is that by laying out, laying out this digital infrastructure by way of an ultra-fast data network, yeah. it's going to give small, medium and large businesses a competitive edge on the local national world stage including the creative sector so we're already in discussions with production companies with film companies who are doing really interesting things so technicolor has announced that they're going to be coming to adelaide now technicolor as we know are a great production company globally known yeah massive 
And this digital infrastructure is one of the things which will help bring them here. Yeah, fantastic. So it's, it, it's all about sustainability, but it's also about having a competitive edge, which we can then use as a means of bringing more companies and more investment to Adelaide. Yeah, beautiful. Well, when it comes to, uh, for instance, sustainability, uh, one of Adelaide's goals is to become a, a carbon neutral city, which I think is very fascinating. Uh, how do you think that we're going to manage that and you know, what's something that we can do to really help with that? Ross, there are very strong links between carbon neutral Adelaide, which is an umbrella term for sustainability, and technology and innovation. There are very strong links between carbon neutral Adelaide and actually the growth of our economy. So we want to be very clear and concise when it comes to our communication and our messages to the world markets about Adelaide and what we're doing. Technology and sustainability. We believe they are the two areas which can define our city on the world stage. Carbon neutral Adelaide. We've got a goal by 2025 to become potentially the world's first carbon neutral city. And really, that is a umbrella term for doing things smarter, for embracing technology and driving down carbon emissions as a byproduct of that. Yep. Now carbon emissions, as we know, come from three main sources in cities. One, what's happening in your grid, so what's happening in your energy grid, and that's why the ten, that's why the the um, uh, the Elon Musk battery is part of that ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. To make us uh, less dependent on fossil fuels. It's very intertwined. It's very intertwined. And but secondly, when it comes to carbon neutral Adelaide, emissions are also coming from transport, and they're also coming from commercial buildings throughout the city of Adelaide. So we're addressing, and we've got separate strategies for each. The grid, which we work in conjunction with the State Government of South Australia. Yep. We've got programs for building owners to reduce their emissions out of their commercial buildings. And we've got transport plans to reduce emissions on our city streets. We want to lead the nation in terms of the uptake of electric vehicles. Uh, and ultimately we see that as a segue towards automated vehicles. So this is all part of this technology story. And it's fair to say that technology and sustainability are actually converging. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we've gone through the era, era, um, era of divergence, now we're going into an era of convergence. And in order to be, have a lower carbon future, in order to have a more sustainable future, you've got to use technology as a conduit towards doing it. Yep. And again, that's why 10 gigabit Adelaide is really important infrastructure because it'll provide all these companies with an infrastructure from which they can innovate. And so we've got programs, we've got incentives. These incentives are sponsored by City Council and some of the incentives are in partnership with the State Government of South Australia. And I was fortunate enough in December 2015 to speak at the Paris Climate Change Conference. Oh, beautiful. That would have been a phenomenal experience. And it was an extraordinary honour to do that on behalf of our city here in Adelaide. But the, what I did learn was that Adelaide globally already had quite a strong reputation for sustainability. Yeah, we do. And in the last three years, we've built upon that exponentially. So I, I genuinely think it's a very exciting time in Adelaide and South Australia. Yeah, nice. What was the experience like speaking there? It was amazing. I, I can remember, Ross, I was um, in a very large auditorium and I said to um, the person before I walked out from behind the curtain, and I said, how many people are out there? She said, oh, sir, you've got an audience of four and a half thousand. Yep. So I said, all right, take a deep breath, Martin. <laughs> but she said, you've got 4.7 million people watching you online right now. Yep. So I no kind problem. of, uh, that actually put a <laughs> smile on my face. So I walked out onto the stage and I was kind of smiling from ear to ear. But um, I'm very passionate about the message. And to be able to share that message on behalf of Adelaide and South Australia about our very strong sustainability credentials was an absolute honour and a privilege. Uh, and we've seen so many companies, we have seen so much investment in sustainability, in renewable energy, whether it's wind and solar, whether it's um, even when they're working at kind of uh, uh, thermal projects now in South Australia also. So there's a multitude of projects and investment coming into Adelaide. And now you walk down a street in Adelaide and you'll meet engineers from various parts around the world have moved to Adelaide. And I genuinely think this has become a movement and it's an absolute point of difference for our city. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's the thing with Adelaide when it comes to getting people from all over the world, that's essentially what we want to do is have something that we can offer them and then to come here and really move forward with, with so many different innovative things. Is, is there an award for the carbon neutral um, movement? Well, Adelaide, and in conjunction with the state government, City Council has a program called Carbon Neutral Adelaide Founding Partners. Yep. 
And we started literally not much more than a year ago with none, and we have well over 100. That's great. Now these are businesses and institutions who have all signed on to a more sustainable future. So we celebrate their achievements with annual awards and annual recognition. And I must say, it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. And there are some big name companies, local, national and international, who are all involved, including the Property Council of South Australia, who's the peak body for commercial property throughout our state, yeah, well. uh, including Siemens, who are a very large multinational company based in Germany. They've got offices here. Uh, they've signed on and a multitude of small businesses and innovators who are doing exactly the same thing. So it's a very big team effort, but it's a great point of difference for Adelaide. Yeah, fantastic. So for everyone that is uh, coming to Adelaide, whether it's you know travel or, or looking to move here, whether it's uh, say from interstate or overseas, uh, what can you tell us about, uh, for instance, the, the laneway projects that are uh, being developed? Well, I can first share with everyone that Adelaide is the fifth most livable city in the world today. That's a great accolade. Oh, it's fantastic. And we've had a few years now. That's right. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, and that's been voted by the Economist Intelligence Unit, who then rate us every year on a base of uh, criteria. Uh, great climate, very friendly people, I must say. One of the greatest parts about Adelaide is a very, very friendly city. Pretty laid back. <laughs> it's laid back, but it's innovative. And I must say, that's a great combination. Market to Riverbank is a network of laneways between the very historic and the very popular Adelaide Central Market, which is the largest downtown produce market in the nation. And also it connects with the Adelaide Railway Station at the other end of this network of laneways. So City Council has a $14.6 million project in conjunction with the State Government of South Australia to upgrade and improve this network of laneways between the Adelaide Central Market and the Adelaide Railway Station and then the Riverbank. And we've done three of these projects already. We've got more underway and it's terrific. It's good for small business. In fact, it's helping small businesses and it's attracting new ones because we have food and wine and wine bars and cafes and pubs and restaurants everywhere in our city. And yep. they all congregate around our main streets and our laneways. Yeah, fantastic. Well, sir, this has been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate you coming on today and uh, all of our listeners at home would definitely be appreciative as well. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, we, we look forward to uh, seeing how uh, Adelaide continues its innovation. Thank you, Ross. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. If you did get some value from this today, please leave a five-star review on the podcast or check out our YouTube channel and leave a comment below. That would be so appreciated. Catch you next time.